Hello, I'm Pastor Brian from Charlestown Baptist Church. We invite you to come and join us as the church gathers for worship. But until then, we put our sermons on video so that we can be a ministry to you and your family wherever you are. God bless you. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 9 here in just a little bit if you want to turn in your Bible there. There's an old story about a traveler that needed to cross a river. And this is before the days of bridges and airplanes and all that. And the only way to cross the river was to swim or to find somebody that had a boat. So the traveler found a man that had a rowboat and they made arrangements for payment. And the traveler settled himself into the back seat of the boat. And the man got his oars in the oar lock and began to row across the river. As they made their way out onto the water, the traveler noticed that one oar had the word faith carved in it. And the other oar had the word work carved in it. <clears throat> and he commented to the boat's owner and asked, what is that about? And the man smiled. He said, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. So he took the oar of faith out of the water and rowed only with the oar of work. And of course, they went around in a circle, as will happen when you row a boat with one oar. He said, religious work gets you nowhere without faith. So then he took the oar of, of work out of the water and he rowed only with the oar of faith and again went around in a circle the other way. And then he said, and, and faith without works is dead. And the gentleman put both oars in the water and rowed vigorously and smoothly across the river. You got to have them both. Take a quick look at Ephesians chapter 2. These are familiar verses. We've looked at them before. It is by grace that you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is absolutely and fully and completely a gift of God. It's not by works and none of us have anything to boast or brag about. But then it changes tone. And Paul says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for the good works. which God has prepared us beforehand so that we should walk in them. We are saved absolutely and fully by his grace, not of our doing. It is all the righteousness and the goodness of God that comes to us. And we access that salvation, we apprehend that salvation by faith alone. And it applies to our lives. And because we are saved and because of the goodness of God, we change. And we have a new attitude. And we have a new heart. And we have a new desire to serve to grow, to experience the transformation of God and labor for the kingdom. We are saved and we work because of it. And I have found that the greater our faith in God, the more our trust in God, the greater our transformation, the greater our ability to serve. The stronger our belief in the goodness of God, the presence of God, and the power of God, the closer our walking with the Lord, the more we achieve for the Lord. And our, our blessings are proportional to our faith. And we have that many more opportunities to serve. Romans 12, 6 implies that to each is given a measure of faith. And the more we rely on that faith and exist in that faith and amplify that faith and experience, practice that faith, the more we know God, the more we serve God. And his power and strength is evident in our lives day by day. I don't know about you, I want all of God's blessings that I can get my hands on. I want all of God's power and strength that he is willing to give to me. And the daily walk of my life, I seek, I hope, I desire 
that it would reflect the power and beauty and strength of the Lord. And as we go to our focal text in Matthew 9, there is a word, a phrase that Jesus used, according to your faith, it will be done. According to your faith, it will be done. So the key to living a great life of faith is have a great faith in a mighty God. So, Matthew 9, beginning at verse 27. Would you stand, please, that we would honor the reading of God's word. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows about it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. Almighty God, help us to see. Help us to truly live by faith and place a great faith in you and let us not be hindered by doubt and fear, but only, Lord, that we would uh, devote ourselves wholly to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And be seated, please. So these two fellows pursued Jesus, followed after him, seeking his mercy and perhaps a healing. And somewhere in their thought process was a belief or a knowledge that Jesus would be able to help them. How they knew this, it doesn't say. The story doesn't tell. But along the way, they came to the conclusion that Jesus was the answer to their problem. And they acted accordingly to follow after him, to speak with him, to approach him and tell him of their need. And that brings our first question in the story, just what is faith? What is faith anyway? Jesus said, do you believe I'm able to do this? Yes, yes we do. According to your faith, let it be done. Hebrews 11 tells us that faith is the substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For a long time in my life, I struggled with that. That didn't make any sense to me. I had to ponder on it. I had to pray on it. When our children were little, and they got to that age where they began to struggle and have doubts, that a big man in a red suit was going to sneak into the house at night and leave them toys at Christmas. As all kids get to the point where they struggle with that. My wife said to them, well, that's fine. If you don't believe, Santa doesn't come. Santa only comes to children who believe in him. So they started to believe again. And that's all well and good for children. It's part of how we celebrate the holiday. As we live our lives and we become adults and we be, grow in wisdom and understanding about life and, and our faith, not in the traditions and habits and patterns of man, not in legends and tall tales, but our faith is in the reality of the living God. Our faith is in the creator and sustainer of life who is incomprehensible and majestic and divine and powerful and as real as you and me. We put our faith in his word, in his truth, in his majesty and might. And we know too that God is mysterious. God is somewhat incomprehensible. He is so far beyond our understanding. And there is much about the kingdom of God that we do not grasp. But even without a complete understanding, even without having to try to explain it all in my small mind, without using finite logic and wisdom, I still believe. We still believe. We still have faith in those things hoped for, even when they are not seen. These two blind men, they likely had no idea why they were blind in the first place, or what Jesus could do, or what faith
physical thing happened to them when he touched their eyes to open them, but they had faith. They trusted even without a full, complete comprehension, and they acted on that faith. You and I do not have all the answers to the mysteries of the universe. Well, maybe you do. I certainly don't. None of us has a complete and perfect understanding of the scriptures, of the doctrines of Christianity, of none of our theology is truly complete. Now certainly we can be confident in a few things, and we can be assured of the things that we do know, and we use our intellect and our reason and our logic and our God-given abilities to know the things that we know to the limits of our capability. That which we have known and experienced personally gives a baseline of evidence, gives us a, 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 a platform of comprehension. But, as for the rest of it, all the many things we do not know and do not understand, we accept, we accept them and believe them on faith. We trust and we believe. I myself have not yet been to heaven to see the glory and see the, all those things being fulfilled to witness the, the presence of God on his throne. Haven't seen that. I'll see it one day. I still believe it's true. I did not meet Jesus face to face in person the way I have met you. I have not understood all the things. I was not a witness to the crucifixion or the resurrection. But I still believe in all those things. And I trust in those things and all the rest of it by faith because I simply accept that they are true and real and significant and valuable and important. And I believe them as a factual reality in the same way that I'm wearing, I believe that I'm wearing a, blue, a gray suit with a blue tie. It is blue, isn't it? God's whole economy operates on faith. Everything we receive from God, we receive first by faith. Hebrews 11.6 tells us, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And of all the many aspects of of this set of beliefs we call Christianity, most of them are matters of faith. Most of them are matters of trusting that they are true, and we choose to believe them, even when we don't fully comprehend them. Even when sometimes the whole world argues against it. Even when there is evidence contrary, we put our faith in God and his word and his truth and his kingdom and God makes all things possible for us. You know and I know that human logic does not give us all the answers. Empirical reasoning, data, facts don't always add up. I'll give you an example. Did you know that bumblebees cannot fly? By the laws of physics, proven by mathematics and aerodynamics, that a bumblebee is incapable of sustained flight. It's a good thing the bumblebees don't know that. They never get anywhere. Charles Kettering was a researcher at General Motors. And he said when he wanted a problem solved, he'd call his engineers into a room and he'd place a table outside with a sign. It said, leave your slide rules here. So they come into the place and he said, here's the problem, start to figure it out. And if they had their slide rules with them, they'd all be pulling them out of the pocket saying, boss, we can't do that. But in faith, we can do those things. 
and in faith without putting limits on our ability to think and imagine and dream, all things are possible for God. Hebrews 11 verse 8 tells us that Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to the place where he'd receive an inheritance. Abraham did not know where that was, but he went. He trusted God. He walked on faith. And the rest of Hebrews 11, that great chapter, talks about the faith of Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Joshua and all the rest. They trusted God, they believed God, and they followed God even when they didn't understand what God was up to. They put their faith in him and they went. And God recognized that and he rewarded them for their faith. And as the people of God, 2 Corinthians tells us, we walk by faith, not by sight. But I tell you too, sometimes our faith gets limited. Back to Matthew 9, Jesus and his two blind friends. Do you believe I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes. According to your faith, let it be done to you. According to your faith, let it be done. I believe Jesus gives us the opportunity to choose. Choose how much faith we apply to him. And we can, by our own doubts and uncertainty, by our own lack of trust in God, put limits on our faith and therefore put limits on God's work in us. We put limits on the promises of God and his blessings and we do that by limiting the extent to which we trust in him. Limiting the extent to which we believe those promises. According to the degree of faith that you have, that much shall be done to you. According to the extent that you trust in God, God will be at work in you. If there was a way to measure your faith, say a scale from zero to a hundred, a faithometer, if you will, Zero being the die-hard atheist, and a hundred being Jesus himself. Where would we fall? How much faith do we truly have? Jesus said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And the more faith that we have, the more of God's blessings and promises we see. God's working in your life is not according to your good looks and charm. It is not according to your checkbook, your title, the number of college degrees that you have. It is not according to the opinion of your peers and your spouse and your children. God works in your life according to the faith that you have in him to work in your life. And the greater your faith, the greater the works he will do in you. The history of Israel is one of ups and downs with God time and time again. And they would return to him in repentance and they'd wander away and then come back. Psalm 78 tells us that a, a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger came up against Israel. Because they simply did not believe in God and trust in his salvation. Their lack of faith hindered them. Their lack of willingness to believe in God hindered their walk. When Jesus came to Nazareth in his own hometown, the people there could not comprehend him as prophet, messiah, they rejected him because they thought, they believed, this is simply Mary's kid. This is simply the carpenter's son. Their preconceived notions limited. And he did not do any mighty works among them because of their unbelief, their lack of faith. Their mistrust of what God was doing. 
And the people there were relying on their own ideas and their own experiences and their own expectations about what God should be and do. Another illustration. The African Impala. You've seen photographs and pictures of those majestic animals out on the Saharas, uh, Sahara savannas. They can jump 10 feet in the air and cover 30 feet in a single bound. They're amazing. And yet, when they get captured and put in a zoo, a three-foot-tall three wall holds them in. Because they will not jump if they cannot see where their feet are going to land. Because they walk by sight, not by faith. Faith is the ability to trust the things we cannot see. To trust and have hope in all that which is mysterious. And without faith we confine ourselves to the flimsy walls that life puts before us. When we put limits on our comprehension of God, we limit our own faith. When we persist in preconceived notions about what God should and can do in any circumstance, we limit and hinder our own faith. When the world comes along and reminds you of all the obstacles and the challenges and how much this is going to hurt, our vision for what God can do is sometimes narrowed. And our hope and our confidence gets shaky and scattered and we're no longer walking by faith in the incomprehensible God and if we do not believe in the power and possibility of an unlimited God to act in us and on our behalf he tends not to work in us Ephesians 3.20 now to him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly more Above all we ask or think, according to the power that works where? In us. In us. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can imagine. He is willing and he is capable and he is able. And there are no limits on God's power and authority. If we refuse to let that power work in us, our faith is limited and God's work in us tends to be limited as well. He is an unlimited God. He is a majestic God. He is a, a, a God of power. Our faith in him opens the passageways for him to work through us. So our two blind friends trusting in God, standing confidently before Jesus. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yes, Lord, according to your faith, it will be done for you. And their eyes were opened. St. Augustine said this, faith is to believe what we do not see. The reward of this faith is to see what we believe. You've heard it said, seeing is believing by faith and in God's faith it's believing that leads to seeing and when we trust in it then we begin to see it and comprehend it in Matthew chapter 8 a Roman centurion came on behalf of his paralyzed servant Christ's healing power and Jesus said to the centurion go your way as you have believed let it be done for you when the servant was healed. As you have trusted, as you have applied faith, so it shall be. Mark chapter 9, a, a man with a sick child brought the, the boy to Jesus, pleading on behalf. All things are possible for one who believes. And with a great faith, we see the great works of God. And in contrast to those stories of a great faith, the disciples were having difficulty casting an evil spirit out of a child. And they asked the Lord why. And he said, because of your unbelief, because of your lack of faith, assuredly I say to you, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you would say to the mountain, 
move from here to there and it will be done. If we have a little faith, we see a little work. If we have a great faith, we see the great works of God. We place our faith in the Savior who came for us. The child of the manger, the man from Galilee, the Savior, crucified and resurrected. We celebrate the season because he is the root of our faith. He is the source of our faith. We rejoice in his presence. We take comfort in our Lord. And our faith is affirmed and our joy is multiplied and our hope is renewed and we trust in him all the more and we put our faith in him and we stand firm by his grace. As we live our lives, as we go through our days on the earth, let us be a people who continually walk by faith, a great and bold faith in our Lord Jesus, one who specialize in doing what seems not possible and according to our faith so let it be done to us amen father god we thank you and we praise you and we give you honor and glory and we seek lord that you would be at work in us and lord according to our faith we pray that you would reveal yourself Help us to have that great faith. Help us to have that strength of heart and character to trust in you in every circumstance that you would be magnified, that you would be glorified through all of it. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. My prayer that this sermon has been a blessing to you and that the Lord spoke to you through these words. We appreciate your participation. If we can be of ministry to you or your family, feel free to give us a call at the church office, 304-725-5917. We look forward to hearing from you. Until then, God bless you.